that troubles you. What are you doing? What are you doing about the circumstances that plague your mind? The healing that you have been so hungering for, what are you doing about it? Are you like the woman with the issue of blood running from doctor to doctor and then waiting until you have no money at all? They go to Dr. Jesus. Are you? For so long, we as Christians, we as human beings, and I use both the Christian and the human beings together and separately because of this. We are flesh and blood, but we are also Holy Spirit filled, Holy Spirit filled creatures. So we are both spirit and we are flesh. The Bible says the spirit and the flesh is always at war. But my question to you, who is winning? Who is winning the battle of your heart? Who is winning the battle of your praise? Who is winning? In the midst of what you are going through, who is winning? Who is winning your attention? Is it the flesh or is it the spirit? Who is getting your glory? Is it flesh or is it spirit? And by spirit, I mean the Holy Spirit. I, by spirit, I mean the being God. Who has your attention? Who has your ears? Praise God. The Bible says, hallelujah, in the book of Esther, praise the Lord Jesus, that there came a time when Esther lost the favor of the king. She lost the favor of her husband. Of her prayer partner. She lost his favor. And now she was no longer the voice that he listened to. He now listened to the voice of Haman. An enemy. The enemy of the Jews, as the Bible would so describe it. Who is in your king's ears? Who is in your ears? Your king could be your husband. Your ears could be who are you allowing to whisper into your ears? Who are you allowing your attention? Who are you allowing to get the glory that only God deserves. Who are you allowing to get what God requires? Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Who are you alone in your ears? Hallelujah. It, 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 it's interesting that the Bible... interesting that the Bible would highlight in verse 26 of Acts chapter 16 that suddenly 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 that that's a verb that's a one word that I want to take out of that suddenly there was a great earthquake suddenly there was great deliverance suddenly there came my miracle suddenly there came my victory suddenly there came my healing suddenly there came my breakthrough but before the suddenly can come we have to open up our mouths and worship we have to open up our mouths and praise God we have to open up our mouths and cry out to God. Don't care about who will hear you. Don't care about who will think that you're making too much noise. The Bible says in verse 25, hallelujah, that when Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, the prisoners heard them. Don't care about who will hear you when you are giving God glory. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about what they will say, but focus on what God believes. Focus on what God 
things. Focus on what God wants out of you. What are you doing before midnight? What are you doing before you begin to pray? Midnight is just an example of the fact that they waited until midnight to pray. They waited until midnight to knock. And it's very interesting because the Bible said, not the Bible, at, the, at midnight, praise God, the, the, the heavenlies are opened up in a particular way where the enemy, because the Christian man is asleep, because man on a whole is asleep, the enemy takes charge at midnight. He releases his witches, his warlocks, his demons. He releases them at midnight. Because that time, it's like the peak hour. It's the peak hour to attack because everybody is asleep. And when you are asleep, it's like your body is dead. You're not conscious. You're not conscious. That is why we need the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Because while we sleep, the Bible says, hallelujah. The Bible says that our spirit makes intercession for us. So while we sleep... While our physical flesh man is sleeping. Hallelujah. Our spirit is making intercession for us. Our spirit is covering us. Our spirit is fighting on our behalf. Praise God. While we sleep. When we wait until midnight to pray. Yes, there is access to the heavenlies in a very tremendous way. There is significant access at midnight. The heavenlies are opened up in a way that they, they are not at any other time of the day. Because at that time, everybody is busy sleeping. So the heavens open up in a particular way where there is access. But with that access come warfare. With that access comes attack. What are you going to do in the midst of the attack? Are you going to wait and sit and be quiet? Or are you going to pray and praise and worship God? And don't care about who hears you. Because you know what you want from God. You know the deliverance that you need from God. You know the breakthrough that you are knocking on heaven's door for. You know it. You know it more than everyone else. Only person who knows it more than you, it's God. You know what you need from God. You know why you are knocking on heaven's door. It's no excuse or it's no accident for us to be up at this time. It's not a, it's not, a, it's not an, it's not a mystery. God knows our hearts. It's nothing impossible for him to bless us. But God wants us to open up our hearts and worship him. To praise him in spite of what we go through. In spite of what comes our way. He wants us to worship him even when we have handcuffs on our hands. Chains shackled to our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Crowns of thorns wrapped around our heads. Whatever that crown of thorn may mean to you. Oh glory to God. Whatever it may mean to you receive that. But in spite of what was happening. Paul and Silas prayed. And, he call, and they called on the name of the Lord. And as a result. Not only did they receive their breakthrough. Not only did they receive their miracle, but they also won souls for God. They also won the household. The Bible says, hallelujah. And hallelujah. Looking from verse 30. Hallelujah. And he brought and brought them out. This is the this is the, the prison guard. He brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Is your lifestyle causing people to say, Mams, sirs, what must I do to be saved? 
the lifestyle that you live is it influencing people to come to Jesus or is it influencing people to run as far away from you as they possibly can as far as the east is from the west what does your lifestyle say about you as a child of God what does your lifestyle say about you and Paul said Paul and Silas said unto them Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and all thy house. Hallelujah. Thou shalt be saved, and all by all thy house. And I'm going back to Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2 and verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children. And to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Not only did the cry and the, the, the worship of Paul and Silas win soul, the soul of, uh, hallelujah, the, the prison guards. But it also won and put into manifestation that which was spoken in Acts chapter 2 39 and I say put into manifestation because if you look at verse verse 30 hallelujah verse 34 praise God when he had brought them into his house he set meat before them and rejoiced believing in God with all his house with all his house praise God because of the lifestyle that Paul and Silas lived because of the fact that in spite of the situation that was set before them oh god i'm in prison oh god i'm in i'm in bonds oh god i'm being persecuted in spite of the fact that they were being prison, persecuted prisoned for jesus they prayed and they worshiped the bible says in everything give thanks for this is the will of god concerning you and if you look at the psalms many of the verses of the psalms start with this praise ye the lord praise ye the lord oh give thanks unto the lord praise ye the psalms continually reiterate the, the, the need to praise God, to worship God, to lift up his holy name. The Psalms continue to reiterate that fact. Praise be to God. So when they prayed and they worshipped, they now got the attention of not only the prisoners, but they got the attention of heaven. Because the Bible says in verse verse 25 sorry verse 26 that there was an earthquake so that so much so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's hands were loosed and this is very interesting to me because the bible did not say only paul and silas hands were loosed but the bible says everyone meaning that after paul and silas prayed everyone in their vicinity got their blessing everyone in their vicinity got their breakthrough everyone in their vicinity got their miracle everyone in the vicinity got their healing everyone in the vicinity got their deliverance everyone in the vicinity got what they have been longing for freedom free dumb when we pray when we worship in spite of everything that we're going through we open up ourselves hallelujah and we open up the atmosphere around us to be blessed we open up the atmosphere around us to give god glory because as a result of their prayers and as a result of their worship they now got the attention of heaven and that attention not only fell upon them, but it transcended to every prisoner.
praise God. And in, in those days, in the prisons, you had like five, six, sometimes even 30 persons in one cell. So imagine an old prison yard filled with people. Filled with many, many people. And it did not say one cell was open. It said cells. All the cells were open. So just think about a prison yard. I'm thinking even of a small prison yard. A prison with just say 10 cells. But with 30 people in a cell. That's 300 people. Praise God. 300 people. I'm just using this as, a, as an example. 300 people got their breakthrough because two men decided to worship God in spite of what they were going through. A million people got their breakthrough because we decided to worship. The Bible says, a thousand shall fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Praise God. The Bible says, one shall chase a thousand and two shall set ten thousand to flight. Hallelujah. Two shall set ten thousand to flight. Glory to God. And if I'm going to read into this particular scripture in a very deep way, when I said two shall set 10,000 to flight, Paul and Silas were two. Praise God. So it could, it, could, it, could be, it could be said that many, many, many people, thousands of people were in those prison cells. Thousands. But as a result of their prayers, as a result of their worship, as a result of their faith, they got their breakthrough and they got a bonus that bonus is they want souls for God they want souls for God they did not murmur they didn't complain they didn't say oh God why me why me I remember a few years ago I said God why me and I heard the Lord said to me why not you and believe me saints of God I don't I, I've I've asked God why me after that, but not in the complaining sense. Because I keep remembering God saying to me, why not you? If God allows you to be in a situation, it is for his glory. If God allows you to be in a situation, it's because he knows he can take you out of it. Why me? Stop saying why me? Say so why not me, God? I'm reminded of Caleb. Caleb said, give me that mountain. Caleb was 88, sorry, 80 years old. Some of us are 25, 30, 50. And we don't even want one mountain. We don't even want one hill, much less one mountain. What are you doing at midnight? What are you doing at midnight? Get ready to pray. Get ready to worship. And I dare say, don't wait until midnight. Prepare yourself before midnight. Because at midnight, the warfare is on. Yes, warfare goes on at other time, times of the day. Don't get me wrong. But at midnight, it's heightened. It's heightened in a different level. Praise God. So before midnight comes, prepare yourself in prayer. Worship. Prepare yourself in prayer. Worship. Get to the level where God wants you to be. So when it is time for you to receive your breakthrough, praise God, not only you will receive your breakthrough, and as I say this to you, I'm saying it to myself, hallelujah. Not only you will receive your breakthrough, praise God, the breakthrough is not only for you, don't be selfish. I rebuke the spirit of selfishness even now. Praise God. The breakthrough is not only for you. The breakthrough is for the glory of God. The Bible says we overcome the lamb by the word, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimonies. Praise God. When we testify about God's goodness, about God, what he did for us, hallelujah. We open up the door for persons to walk in and say, God, me too. We open up the door for people to say, God, I want my breakthrough. God, I know you did that for her, so I know you can do this for me. I know you can give me my breakthrough. I know you can give me my miracle. 
the bible is literally a book of testimonies it is it is the biggest book of testimonies that there will ever be printed because not only is it hallelujah as the story of the from the from the beginning of time not only is it the testimony of god mighty god but it is also the fact that it is the word of god it tells us of the story of god it tells us of everything that god did and then some and some things have not yet been revealed because the bible says in the book of revelations hallelujah after god had instructed john he said to john write these things in a book and shut them up until the end praise god so some things have still not yet been revealed praise god so the testimony that we share the word the life that we live oftentimes becomes the ladder that somebody needs to get to their destination oh glory i received that jesus i'm gonna say that again this testimony that we give the life that we live often becomes the ladder that somebody needs to get to their destination it often becomes the ladder that somebody needs to get to their miracle to get to their breakthrough to get to their way out the testimony what are you doing with your testimony are you sitting on it or are you sharing it praise God are you sitting on your testimony or are you sharing the victory praise the Lord Jesus praise God God bless you all praise the Lord Jesus I pray that this word of encouragement did something to you because just as I shared it I felt strength in my own body in my own spirits I felt revived glory to God 